Welcome back to what I believe is episode 6. Um, I'm just literally going through um, the settings to make sure we are all where we need to be. Um, so just need to check that we've using the right microphone. Right, I think we are now. Um, I think we were using the wrong microphone before. But we'll give that a go. Uh, you're obviously using the right camera. Yeah, excellent. So, anyway, um, this one's going to be a bit of, uh, well, might be a bit of a slow one, really, because we've got a lot of uh, prep sort of work to do here, really. Um, as a quick update, uh, last night the uh, the 26 millimeter hose that went on there snapped um, and I very carefully had to remove um, what was glued to the uh, uh, to the little stand out there that the pipe goes on um, so that that's got to be repaired at some point I'm not doing that now what we're looking at is getting all the uh, components ready for the, the rear suspension um, and that involves these um, in fact I, I'm just going to step forward skip forward in the instructions just very slightly because I just want to see if the front suspension is going to be the same uh, as the back in terms of color because if it is um, t -t -t then I may as well get it all done now um, where are you come on so here you are uh, what have we got? No colour down there. Oh, there we go. X18, uh, front lower arms, X18, X18, um, Angela's back from shopping. Um, there we go. Yeah, it looks like they're all the same, so we may as well just check in that one. X18, yeah, X18 yes all the same color so we may as well get the lot um, prepared um, we will also have a quick look at the um, tires as well so let's get everything out of here that we so we can get rid of this box P5. I don't think there's any. There's no markings on here, though. Hmm, that doesn't help. Right. That does not help. BP5. Uh, let me just go to the front ones again check these BP8 they're listed as the rear ones right um, so let's uh, the front lower so these are the front upper I'm sure
you know, I even wonder sometimes whether this kit, when it was originally made, was even meant for the British market because the everything on the box, are, uh, all the important sort of things are in. Um, I guess it's Chinese, Japanese. I don't know what. Um, front up. Right, so we've got two front upper, front lower, which is okay, I can do those pieces. These ones are a different matter though. Um, so we've got tie rods. Right, these are tie rods. Um, You don't know how to soak. They're the tie rods, and then we've got front damper operating arms. Um, front damper operating arms. They've got to come out to be primed and front damper operating arms tie rods. So the tie rods are those. This piece here is going to be easy to recognise because it's the only one like it. So I don't have to worry about this piece if I can get it out. There we've got that one. Um, then we've got these pieces. Now this is the rear lower and rear upper now these should the rear upper are unique so they're easy to spot because they've got a, a z sort of shape to them which i will show you in a minute if i can get into this bloody box shape to them which is kind of unique so by process of elimination that can only be the upper arm so they're the only ones left um, which will mean they're the rear uh, lower um, and finally the last piece in here which doesn't look like you're gonna need painting at all because it's already that satin black finish I don't think this is plastic smell is the um, steering rod which is cool that's already done so right I was hoping to get rid of that box but um, might have to keep it just for reference um, so what we need to do now is get these all onto uh, like cocktail sticks so we've just got to go around now and check for any burrs or little marks where it's come away. You can see there's a kind of a tiny little one there. I'm just going to bring the camera up a bit because it looks like it's dropped a tiny bit. Um, big one there and you might be able to 
see where I've taken all the the sharp all rough areas off yeah, it's always on that same edge so that must be the point where they somebody's already been over roughly um, but they've just left a little bit too much there just want to you know make sure it's not there ideally I'd love to remove these but um, Um, really don't see how I'm going to do it. Oh, that one's okay. Really don't see. See, these ones are quite a unique look, so I could I could take them off because I don't need. I, they're, they're the only ones in the set that even remotely look like it. Um, all right, so we're back, um, and we're back with uh, a power tool now. <laughs> I couldn't find the items that I wanted to cut these uh, off. Um, so I went and got the cutting disc um, I've already done one just to make sure it works and uh, it's very simple you just need to hold that up there like that and I don't recommend cutting towards you, that's bad on my part. And then once that side's done, sometimes it'll break away because the connection's not that strong. And there you just see it comes away. And then very lightly you can just not too much uh, still a bit sharp so once it's done once you've done that just come along with this because by that using that you will create two sharp edges there and so you just need to remove those that one's not too bad but it's still a little bit there there we go so that's uh, that one done and I've just got to yeah that one's a bit nasty there So that's them two done. Uh, you don't need to apply any force at all on this. Um, ideally, you would best have hold of them in a pair of pliers or something so your hands are not so close. Um, but as long as you're careful and you know what you're doing, You're literally just touching the edge and let, well, to coin a famous phrase, let, let the Dremel do the work, or semi-famous phrase, I guess. Uh, 
take that horrible edge off there. I'm going to try something here, well that just, oh yeah, just comes away, so you only really need to do the one side, I think, so, um, let's just take that off, so we'll try that with the others, and see whether they're all the same, so, the front, we got any burrs on here? No, <laughs> yeah, yeah, just it's not a very strong metal at all. So, before. Totally ditch the um, before I totally ditch the labels. I just need to uh, make a little note. Be extremely careful when uh, using these, they are merciless. And one wrong move, and you could have a huge gouge out your fingers. So, really, uh, if you're, I would say, if you're not an adult or a responsible person then you at least need to have some supervision with you when you do it certainly if you're I would say under 16 uh, I would get a parent to do it something like that it's um, I know everybody says that they won't you know they know how to do it and stuff like that but accidents do happen and um, that is an area where there is the potential for one um, as always with power tools follow safe practices um, safety glasses um, you know be careful of the environment you're in because you can get sparks off these depending on the material you're using how fast you're spinning the cutting wheel and so on so there we go um, now the other thing that I've wanted to get uh, but it uh, you know I just haven't had the time or the funds was some metal uh, they, you can get a little jar of metal priming um, it's not primer it comes in a little glass jar and it enables you to prime with um, your regular hobby stuff you just put this liquid on um, I wanted to get some of that to show demonstrate it but unfortunately the company that I was going to get it from wanted 18 pound postage which I was not willing to pay um, so now come back down a little bit now we're gonna hopefully get our cocktail sticks Let's get these ready to prime so these are all my uh, glues and uh, so on in there yes the rest of the glues so these are the glues like uh, spares uh, the rest are in the drawer just down here 
Um, so I want cocktail sticks and I think that's it. I want to try and get away with not using super glue. Although actually, how many have we got? So there we are, there's our pieces all ready to be primed. Uh, and I will go and prime them now. Um, and then there's just one more thing I want to go over with on this session and that's uh, doing the tyres. So um, I will go away and do this quickly because I'm going outside to do these. Um, and I will be back in a minute um, so let me just we're back um, and let me just get that camera right again and uh, they're all primed it's a lovely day out there and they're all sitting out in the Sun getting baked um, it's uh, gonna be brilliant for them uh, so before we wrap up today I just wanted to uh, talk about wheels um, in particular the wheels that come with these so when you get them they come um, like this and they have a nasty little uh, seam line that runs all the way around um, not very good at all uh, it's it's really horrible um, now one of the methods we tried um, was to put them in the fridge for 24 hours um, and then try and remove the line um, but it didn't work so then we progressed and we put them in the freezer for 24 hours the theory being that the seam line would become brittle and then basically just snap off when you try to when you start sanding it and make it easier to remove um, that didn't work uh, uh, my theory on that is that I think these are vinyl um, and they don't freeze as such that you know they don't freeze like uh, I believe other material would although I don't know I'm uh, the, the idea of putting them in the freezer was new to me um, so I, I was just going off the recommendations of uh, somebody else um, but uh, yeah we both agreed that we think it's the because they're vinyl so I tried various other methods and um, I, I didn't have much joy but then I came on this method and um, I think that looks, now you're looking at it very close, but that looks as good as a Formula One tyre that's been run on a track. That's what they go like. They go this matte um, finish. Uh, unfortunately, that seam line appears to go way down into the vinyl. Um, it's just there if you look hard enough it is there there's nothing you can do uh, nothing that i've been able to find out um i will keep looking but i'm happy with that i'm happy with how that looks um to me that that looks perfect i mean you're looking at it from about this far away most people are just going to look at it from sort of reading distance and um yeah yeah that, that's brilliant so how did i do that well it was very simple really there's another one that i've done there um so you can see them side by side um and this one was not done so you can see if we pull the two together so one that's not done and one that's done 
you can see the difference. Now I haven't wiped them clean yet, um, but to be honest, on this on this side that's been done, these little tiny bits of fluff and that that I've got in there, or dirt dust, um, you do get that on um, Formula One tyres. You don't get dirt, like you know, like bits of fluff and dirt and dust. But it looks the debris off the road looks like that. You'll get the odd little stone that's embedded itself and. Um, so th that just adds to the realism in my in my opinion um, so anyway let's get this one done and it's just a matter of one of these uh, just bring this back up a bit because it's going to need to be up it's just uh, one of these uh, you're going to need to put it on uh, if it's the park side one you're going to need to put it between two to three and then you literally just want to go around the And very lightly touch the the seam line. And initially, you're just going round the middle to make that line disappear. Don't worry how it looks. Just keep going. If it makes too big, uh, uh, you know, grooves or anything. Just turn it up a bit and don't be so heavy handed. Um, you literally just want to touch it. You need to move it about. Try to limit your movements from across the wheel like that because it will leave, um, leave a pattern in the wrong direction. Just keep going. Stop every now and check. We're nearly, we're nearly done on the seam line. Right. So there we go. We've got that nice. That seam line's now gone. So now it's a case of just going round from edge to edge. And making it, giving it that matte finish. Keep clearing any, just double check every now and then for any shiny bits, you do get them. Be careful though, the faster you go, the more material this will remove. And you don't want huge gouges coming out because it will look wrong. And I think, are we there? A little bit there. And then when you're finished, just go round once in that direction, in a clockwise direction, just to remove any shiny bits. And even out the uh, matte colour of the wheel so um, there you go and you can see the material comes off on your hands so probably best to wear um, gloves and oh, best to wear gloves and I would suggest a face mask as well um, 
it's um, vinyl so it's not um, I don't know where that stands on things but uh, there we go that uh, I think that one's even better perfect absolutely perfect love it so there you go that's how you get your wheels looking um, like they've been raced um, okay uh, I think that will do for today uh, we're running on 50 minutes by the time I've edited it we should cut down that quite a bit um, so thanks for watching next time we're obviously going to bring the uh, the suspension parts back in give them a nice uh, semi-gloss matte coat um, and then we'll leave them to dry and then they'll get assembled so uh, stay tuned for that thanks for watching and as always don't forget to join our facebook channel um, and also our youtube channel um, the links are all in the descriptions below uh, thanks for watching and bye for now